Hello, good evening and welcome to Morris's Midweek Message. Well, we have been enjoying wonderful weather this Easter time and yet we're stuck at home. How peculiar it is. What a strange and topsy-turvy world we're living in at the moment. The disciples after the resurrection were in a very different world than they had thought about. Everything had changed and turned upside down. One moment they were mourning his loss, the death of Jesus. The next he's speaking to them. It's interesting in Matthew's Gospel that very quickly after his resurrection, it seems he's telling them to go to Galilee and he'll meet them there. And Matthew takes us straight away to the mountainside where Jesus soon will be ascended into heaven. Before he goes, he gives them this great commission. You'll find it in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 16. And I wanted to read these verses to you now. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. These disciples are given a command and that command is to go to go into all the world now for this little band of followers who barely i'm sure had left galilee or jerusalem what an amazing command they were given to go into all the world At this time when we as a church can't meet together, like so many others, we're having to come up with ways and means of doing church. And we've been recording our services and putting them out, Facebook, YouTube, and they've been going out to who knows where across this world. And not only us, of course, so many other churches in this little place have been doing the same. And you would like to think that somewhere in this topsy-turvy world where we're all frightened about this COVID virus, that actually God's word being preached and spoken and people maybe clicking on to it in far-flung places, might actually begin to hear of the good news of Jesus. Every cloud, they say, has a silver lining. And maybe this is a glorious silver lining. We're called to go. So please remember that first letter of that word, G, for a moment. But they're going with authority. That's what Jesus tells them to do. Go with authority and speak in my name. If an ambassador is called to a new country to go and represent the sovereign or the president, then that person is given credentials and they present it to the head of state of that country and now they can speak with authority on behalf of of their sovereign or their president and that country. 
That's the sort of authority that Jesus gives to us. Go and tell people about me and do it in my name. So go with authority. So please remember the A. Then he asked them to teach people about him. To tell of what he did and what it means that he died and what it means that he rose again. Tell them the good news about God, about God's heart for them, God's love for people, even though they have sinned and messed up things. He is willing to forgive. So teach them something that they do not know or understand yet. That God truly loves them and calls them to be his. So that's our T. And then the final letter is E. And that stands for equipped. How could these little group of disciples do this, go into all the world? Well, that's quite simple, but very profound. They could do it not in their own strength, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus also told them to, to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit and, and then they will go in power. And that's what happened. And one of the first things that happened was they all started to speak in other languages. Jerusalem was filled with people from all over the world. And on that first Pentecost, they all heard God's word spoken in a language that they could understand. They couldn't have done that themselves. They needed to be equipped by God's Spirit to do it. So those four letters that I asked you to remember spell out gate. And in John's Gospel, when Jesus was talking about himself being the Good Shepherd, he also spoke of himself in chapter 10 at verse 7 of being the gate. At night, the shepherd led his sheep into the sheepfold. It didn't have a door, but he became the door. And he lay in the space where the door would have been. He became the door to protect his sheep. Then in the morning, as he got up and dusted himself down, he led them out into delicious pasture, the fresh, clear spring water for them to drink and to eat. He would guard and protect them. He would bring them safely back to the fold at night. Jesus is the gateway that brings men and women into a living, saving relationship with God. And he is the one who asks us to go and do that. Who knows, at the end of time, someone will point out the fact that they have heard on the internet at this time of COVID virus, the truth of God's word. Every cloud surely at times has a silver lining. And maybe God can use this time to bring about an even better plan, an even better future for the people who live in this world. So we're command, commanded to go. Go in authority. Go and teach by word and deed. To be equipped by God's Spirit. 
and in God's plan and purpose. This time may be a wonderful time when many, many people, perplexed and worried, will hear the good news of Jesus. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, in this topsy-turvy world and life that we're in the midst of now, when all the norms have been turned upside down, when life is being confined to home and a little walk each day, when we are frightened of a virus that could cause us serious illness, maybe even death. We are also called and compelled to use these days wisely, to go in your name and to use whatever means we have to tell others about Jesus. Father, we think of so many churches and their services going out across the internet. Right across this world, someone may just be browsing and come across one of those services and be engaged by it. Father, you have the most amazing capacity to get people to hear your truth. In the midst of fear, bring hope, we pray. Father, we also want to pray for those who are putting their lives at risk for us today. We thank you that our Prime Minister is recovering from this virus. We thank you for so many others who have as well. We thank you for those who are working tirelessly to bring healing and restoration of health. But we also know that there are those who have lost the fight and there are many families who grieve. We ask that you would be with them. And so on this Wednesday evening, in a topsy-turvy, upside-down world, Father, hear our prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just before I go, just a couple of announcements. First of all, uh, please remember about the prayer line. Please send us in prayer requests. A lot of people have signed up to be part of uh, the prayer team. And so lots of people will be praying about your prayers, so please send them in. And then just to remind you of Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, when we meet together for church. So there'll be lots of people taking part, uh, children's talk, uh, testimony uh, and, and other things. So please come and join us on Sunday morning. Keep safe and well. Good night. <laughs>